I now want to teach you guys about calorimetry. Simply defined, calorimetry is the science of measuring how much heat is produced by chemical reactions. Devices used to measure this are called calorimeters. Here's an artistic depiction of a simple calorimeter. The way it works is we place our reactants inside some type of container, which could be two styrofoam cups nested together, and we seal the container using a cork stopper or often a more high-tech stopper. We stir the mixture to get the reaction going and we measure the temperature change as the reaction proceeds. Now as I talked about in an earlier lecture, you might remember that for a constant pressure system, that is one in which there's no expansion or contraction due to change in pressure, when I have a chemical reaction going, the change in enthalpy is equal to Q, the amount of heat given off by our chemical process. Now calorimeters help us to measure enthalpy change, delta H, for specific reactions by measuring the heat, Q, that they produce. And this prompts me to ask you a simple lecture question. Would the temperature go up or down in an exothermic reaction? Now, I'm not going to answer that for you, but sincerely hope that you have the ability to answer it on your own. Now as we discussed back in chapter 3, combustion reactions have the general formula shown here in which some kind of hydrocarbon combines with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. There are also combustion reactions that involve reacting alcohols, whose formula I have not shown here, with oxygen to form the same product. Now, these reactions are studied calorimetrically by using a bomb calorimeter that's flushed with excess O2. Here is a picture of a bomb calorimeter. Now you can imagine that you're combusting hydrocarbons or alcohols in the presence of oxygen, it's going to create a tremendous amount of heat and pressure. Bomb calorimeters operate by the same principle as our styrofoam calorimeter shown in the previous slide. However, they are generally much stronger to be able to resist the increase in pressure caused by these types of reactions. A simple bomb calorimeter will have a small steel chamber nested inside an external steel chamber filled with water. The chemical reaction, the actual combustion, is done in here, and presumably all of the heat that's produced when that material is combusted is transferred to the water outside. The water's temperature increases by a certain amount, and that amount is measured using a thermometer. The water is, of course, stirred to keep it homogeneous so that the temperature increase will be uniform throughout. By doing this type of process, we can measure the temperature change, Q, and hence the delta H, or change in enthalpy, of our combustion reaction. Here's a link to a really cool YouTube video featuring bomb calorimetry that you're welcome to watch if you wish. We now move to a different subject, calculating change in enthalpy for multi-step reactions. Now, as we noted in an earlier lecture, enthalpy, H, is a state function. Thus, if I have two systems that are otherwise identical and have the same enthalpy, it doesn't matter if each of them arrived at that state from a different direction. In other words, this means that a substance's enthalpy level depends only upon its final state and not upon how it got there. And because of this, the overall enthalpy change, or delta H, for a multi-step reaction is just the sum of the individual delta H values for each step. This fact is encapsulated by something called Hess's Law. Now, I realize that these words might sound confusing, so please rest assured I'm going to show you how they apply to real life examples. Let's pretend that we're asked to calculate the delta H for the following reaction taking methane and combusting it in the presence of oxygen and water to form carbon dioxide and more water. So in looking at this, you might be tempted to think that the only way we could measure the delta H for this process would be to use some type of bomb calorimetry. But if you think that, you would be wrong. You see, if we're actually given the delta H values for individual reaction steps that when we add together end up giving us the final equation shown here, then we can just add together the individual delta H values for each of those individual steps and get the final delta H for the whole process. Now, I realize this sounds totally confusing, but rest assured I'll show you an example. So let's pretend we were also given this information, that when methane is combusted in the presence of O2 to give these products, the delta H has been measured and reported as being negative 802 kilojoules. And separately, that when we convert 
two molecules of O2 gas to two molecules of O2 liquid, the delta H is negative 88 kilojoules. So you'll notice that if we take these two equations and add them together, we get an overall equation that looks like this. You'll also note that the H2O gas on the left side of the equation and the H2O gas on the right side of the equation can algebraically cancel each other out, thereby giving us, as our final equation, the original question we were asked about. Now what in the world does that mean? What it means is that if we want to know the overall delta H for the entire original process we were asked, we can just add up the delta H values of each of these individual steps. Negative 802 plus negative 88. Thus, the overall delta H for this original equation shown here is negative 890 kilojoules. So let's do with some examples. I want you to calculate the enthalpy change for the reaction shown here. Knowing first that the individual delta H's for these two separate processes are the values shown here. In order to do this, I have to point out one more thing. Delta H for any reaction going in one direction is equal in magnitude but opposite in sign of going in the reverse direction. In other words, if I take a reaction with the reactants on the left side and the products on the right side, and I have a delta H, I decide to just flip those around so that my products are now on the left side and my reactants are on the right side, then the delta H of the reverse process has the exact same number, I just swap the sign from negative to positive or vice versa. Now that'll become important in this particular example. Here's our target reaction given in our original problem. And here are the two individual stepwise reactions we were given. Now you'll note, looking at this equation up here, that P4 plus 3O2 gives P406 with the following delta H. If we compare this first equation with the equation that's shown up at the top, you'll note that P406 appears on the left side of the reaction at the top that we're trying to get to, but on the right side of the reaction that we've been given. What I'm trying to do is manipulate these two stepwise reactions in some way so that when I add them together, they will add up to give me the final target reaction shown at the top. Now because P406 is on the right side of the equation here, but on the left side of the equation in the final reaction I'm trying to get to, what I can do is just switch the products and the reactants and change the sign of the delta H. In other words, P406 being placed on the left side of the equation and P4 plus 302 being placed on the right side of the equation will have a delta H of positive 1640.1 kilojoules. The reason that I did that, once again, is because the P406 shown on the product side is not on the product side in my final destination. It's on the reactant side. Let's take a look at our next equation. Our next equation shown here has P4010 on the product side. Our final destination, our target equation up here, also has P4010 on the product side. Thus, I can leave that as is. You'll note that if I add these two things together, they end up giving me this big, long, hairy equation here. I've got the P406 on the left side being added with the P4 on the left side and the 502 on the left side. That ends up giving me an overall huge left side shown here. And on the right side of my equation, I have P4 plus 302 plus P4010 forming a big final right side shown here. You'll note that the P4 solid on the left side of the equation and on the right side of the equation cancel each other out. You'll also note that algebraically, I've got 502 on the left side of the equation and 302 on the right side of the equation. I can subtract 302 from both sides of the equation, giving me an overall equation of P406 plus 202 going to P4010. That is indeed the exact target equation I've been trying to get to. The delta H for this whole process is obtained by just adding up the individual delta H's for these stepwise reactions. Positive 1640.1 added to negative 2940.1 gives me negative 1300 kilojoules for the overall process. I'm going to finish by showing you this other one, which I'll let you read and do on your own. Now that'll wrap it up for now. Please listen to our next installment in which I think I will actually finish Chapter 5's discussion on thermochemistry.